Welcome to Accounting in Focus. Today we're going to look at the last method of calculating bad debt expense and this is called the aging of accounts receivable. Now just to do a little bit of review, in previous videos we talked about the fact that when you're doing an allowance method, which that's what this is, this is an allowance method, let's see, I don't have my brush on. There we go. Okay, so this is an allowance method. And we said that there are two different types of allowance methods. There's the income statement method and the balance sheet method. Okay. We are dealing with accounts receivable, which means we have a balance sheet method because we're using a balance sheet account. So when you're recording bad debt, your journal entry is always the same. It's going to be bad debt expense and allowance for doubtful accounts. And I'm going to put DA for doubtful accounts. Okay. Typically bad debt expense is going to be your debit and allowance for doubtful accounts is going to be your credit. But these are the two accounts that are involved in the journal entry. So if you watch the video on the percent of accounts receivable method, the aging of accounts receivable is very similar. The only difference is instead of taking the total, okay, so instead of just looking at the total and multiplying it by one percentage, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how old each one of the receivables is. Because if you think about it, the older a receivable is, the less likely it is that we're going to collect it. So what the aging method does is it looks at the age of the receivables and says based on how old it is, we're less likely to collect it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do with the aging method is you need to figure out how much will not be collected. So I have an aging schedule here and this is typically what they look like. Okay. So I have $203,000 that's not yet due. So what that means is that usually we give people 30 days to pay their bill and so not yet due means that they have not hit that 30 days yet. Okay. So the bill is still current. And 1% of those receivables is not collectible. So I'm going to take 203,000 times 1%, which is 2,030. Okay, so of the 203, 1% is not collectible, that's 2,030. We have 20,000, which is 1 to 30 days overdue, so that means they've gone past the 30 day window we gave them to pay, so now they're late and 2% is not collectible. So if I take 20,000 times 2%, it's a very small amount, that's only 400. I have 13,000, that is 31 to 60 days overdue, and 9% of that is probably uncollectible. All of these percentages are based on the company's previous history. Okay, so what they do is they look at previous history and decide how much is not collectible. So if I take 13,000 times 9%, that's 1,170. Then I've got $4,500, which is 61 to 90 days overdue, and 30% of that is not collectible. Notice there's a big jump, right? If they're 60 days overdue, due, it's only 9%, but once they hit that 61st day, 30% is probably not collectible. So that would be $1,350 if I do 4,500 times 30%. Then $2,800 is over 90 days, and 70% of that is not collectible. So that is a huge portion of that's not collectible. So if I do the math, 2,800 times 70% is 1,960. Okay, so now I'm going to add up all these balances. And that gives me $6,910. Okay, so now let's think about what is this number. When you're using a balance sheet method, 
I am using accounts receivable, which is what I'm doing here, to calculate my allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so I'm using an accounts receivable balance to calculate my allowance balance. So this would be the new balance in allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so let's put new balance. in allowance. Okay, so after I do my calculation I always try to figure out, okay, what do I have here? What is this number? Because once I have this number, then I've got to figure out what's going to go in my journal entry. <clears throat> so let's look at the two different scenarios. So in there's scenario one, my allowance for doubtful accounts has a $400 credit balance. This is where T accounts come in really handy. I like using T accounts when I'm doing, um, whenever I'm doing a balance sheet method. So I'm going to start with drawing my T account. And this is my T account for allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so I have a $400 credit balance. I'm going to put it on the credit side. And then my new balance in the account is six thousand nine hundred ten dollars so that means if I draw my line six thousand nine hundred ten so that means if I have four hundred in the account I need to get to sixty nine ten so I've got to figure out what amount is going to go here so that this works okay because remember, journal entries are about changes in balances, not the balance itself. Okay, so my balance isn't changing by 6910. It needs to be 6910 when I'm done. It's kind of similar to what we did with supplies um, earlier in the semester when we were adjusting the supplies account. And it would say, okay, there's, you know, you you had $700 in the account and we counted everything up and now you only have two. So you had to figure out what was that amount you plugged in to get to that balance. So we're doing the exact same thing here. So in order to get from a $400 balance to a 6910 balance, I'm going to have to credit my account $6,510. Okay, because if I had 400 and I credit the account 6510, that'll get me to 6910. Okay, so my journal entry, let me go back to my blue here, my journal entry is going to be bad debt expense and allowance for doubtful accounts I'm going to just abbreviate that DA I'm going to set up my debit and my credit and so my debit is going to be this amount right here, 6510, because I need to credit the allowance account 6510 to make this work. Okay, so there's my journal entry for that one. Okay, so that's scenario one. <coughs> now, so let me put a number one next to that. Okay, now let's look at scenario number two. So for scenario number two, my allowance for doubtful accounts, let's do this in different color, has an $800 debit balance. Okay, so let's do our T account again. I love doing the T accounts for this. It just makes it so much easier to see it. So if you're not doing T accounts, you should really try them out because I think it helps a lot. I have an $800 debit balance and I still need to end up with a balance of 6,910. <clears throat> so again we have to look and say what do I have to put here to make this work? Okay. If the normal balance in an allowance account is a credit and you have a debit balance in the account, your account's overdrawn is essentially what happened. So you didn't put enough in the allowance account to cover all the bad debts you had. So the first thing you need to do is you need to put enough in the account to bring you back to zero because right now you're $800 overdrawn. 
then you have to bring it to the balance of 69.10. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add these two numbers together. So here we subtracted, right? We took 69.10 minus the balance that was already in the account. Here we're going to add them together. So if I add them together, let's see, let me get back to my green. So that would be 7,000, let's see, my brain's not working today, 7,710. Okay, so this would be enough to cover the $800 overdrawn plus the $69.10 that I need. Okay, so this is the amount of my journal entry. So if I do the journal entry for number two, the accounts are going to be exactly the same. The only thing that's going to be different is the amount. So bad debt, expense. and allowance for doubtful accounts. Set up my debit and my credit. So my debit is going to be 7710 and my allowance is also going to be 7710. And that's it. Okay, just make sure that you remember that this is a balance sheet method the balance sheet method so you're using accounts receivable to calculate allowance for doubtful accounts.